So it's a little over a year ago that my friends over at Crimson Guitar in the, in the UK gave me this part stray in the shape of a, of a guitar body. It is crazy how often I utilize a part strays on different parts. And it got me thinking, I would love to create some of different shapes. Oops. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my process on figuring out how to make these custom part strays. I did a few different shapes, but my favorites were an ax, a chicken, and a Texas. Let me show you the process. Of course, you can do this in any shape. However, I chose an ax. And the first thing I did was use my CNC to cut out a template. And this way I can use a flush trim bit in my router to cut out the actual shape. I have a beautiful piece of bird's eye maple that I can use the majority of the board for a nicer project. However, one end has a giant knot on it and then also some checks through it. So I'm gonna cut off the section that's a keep and set it aside and then cut off the section that has the knot and cracks in it and use that to make some part strays. I'm gonna trace this on there just so I can make sure I'm leaving myself enough room to make a perimeter later on. Now I'm gonna actually secure the template to the piece of wood so I can use a router to hog out the material. Look at those nice chips. That's how you know you're bit sharp is whenever you're getting chips and not shavings or chips and not sawdust. I go through and I make the perimeter cut and then I go back through the center and I start hogging away all the material. One really great thing about this router is that it has a fixed base or plunge base option, meaning I can start off with the blade up above the wood and then just slowly plunge it in to whatever depth of pass I wanna take off. And now that I just got done with that pass, next I'll plunge it down a little bit deeper and continue on until I get the depth overall that I want. This method is actually gonna take a little bit longer than I thought. So I'm gonna go hog away the bulk of the material in the center over at the drill press and then come back and clean it up with the router. To speed up the process, I'm gonna be using a Forstner bit to remove the bulk majority of the inside waste. Now that I'm in the middle of this, I'm understanding that there might be a little bit better of a process. So instead of starting with the interior cut, I'm actually gonna start with the profile cut because by starting with the interior pocket, I don't have a great way of attaching this template that I need in order to cut the profile. So let's switch it up and see if that does us better. Okay, for this one, I can't use the clamp, so I'm gonna do some double-sided tape. By the way, if you ever buy double-sided tape, don't buy actual double-sided tape by carpet tape. It's the same thing, but much, much cheaper. So now I've reached the extent of my bit, so I'm going to take off this top layer template and get a prying tool. That would probably be this way to remove this top layer and then repeat the process going down further. On this piece of maple, I had a few snafus. Seems to be the, uh, the trend for this project. This wall I made a little bit too thin and then this one had a big blowout because I thought the incorporating the knot would be cool, but of course that's the weakest part of the wood. So no big deal, the process worked. So I switched over to another piece of material. I actually don't even know what this is. And I used this template to do the profile of a few different ones. And now I'm gonna go back and use this template in order to get the pocket on this inside. So now in order to remove the tray from all of the waste material, you can do a few things. I trim mine up at the bandsaw and then run it over the jointer to remove that additional eighth inch bottom layer. However, you can trim it up at the bandsaw and then use a flush trim bit to remove it as well. So I left this lip so I could run it over the jointer and free this entire part. Now, of course, I have a CNC, so I can do these on my machine, but I really wanted to do one by hand so that if you want to make a custom part stray, then you understand the process and how you can go about it. Plus, even though this one is 
much less perfect than what a CNC can do. I don't know, it has so much character and it's more about the process and being resourceful and figuring out how do you do this without a machine. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me. And if you would like a part tray, then I do have these three shapes over on my website available. So everything I used is linked for you down in the description and I'll see you on my next project.